On today's starting nine, the boys talk about Jake's learning how to surf. I don't know. We'll find out what that means. There's some big news around Major League Baseball. A late cancellation, but does that get us down? No, because there's plenty to talk about going to 4th of July. We got tons of news, tons of stories, tons of love, and the vibes are through the roof. Close. Let's have a great starting nine. Action, and welcome back to starting nine, Barstool's official podcast with two bald jacked hot dudes, Carl here in Chicago, Jake in Austin, Colin in New York. Um, happy 4th of July. Good to see everybody. Uh, Jake, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, man. Ha- happy 4th of July weekend coming up. Uh, just en- enjoying enjoying the life, man, uh, with family. And kids are staying up super late every night with their friends. The adults are uh, eating good, drinking good, ha- having a blast. Having a blast. And, yeah, I'm trying to figure out this surf thing. These kids make it look so fucking yeah. easy. And I'm just embarrassing myself. Uh, I've got buddies that... Uh, can pop up right away and and do all these tricks and shit and i'm just i'm so jealous so i'm i'm committed to figuring this thing out so if anybody out there has has tips on how to get my big ass up on this board uh with ease please help me please help yeah i'm interested in this because it's like uh you learning something you're not good at I'm also interested, but like, it seems like you're passionate and competitive. Did you, like, promise the Austin Chamber of Commerce that you would put on, like, a show for people on the 4th of July or something? Like, do you have a commitment, or is this just a purely recreational? Oh, it's all recreational, but, like, you know, absolutely competitive. And I didn't think it was going to be this tough. You, you see kids and even adults, like, people that, are, that aren't in good shape, overweight, pop, popping up, like, doing tricks and 360s. And I, I just want to get on the board. I'll start there. I just want to get on the board. I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to be greedy. Tricks will come later, but yeah, uh, just for fun and just to show my kids that I'm capable of doing it. And you don't want to. I don't want to look like an idiot and basically drowning trying to get on this board. So you could probably do it. It's. I don't think it's that hard. I think I'm making it too hard. I think I, you and Colin. You know, okay. next time you come down, I'm sure y'all won't have a problem with it. It's a little frustrating that I can't get on the board. We've seen you struggle before. You bounce back the oh, next day a lot. pretty well. The first time we got together on the uh, – no, I was going to say with the wedges on the range. I ain't never seen you struggle oh, like that, pal. You were, sh- you were, you yeah. were shaky. Con- we we're going to give you a new nickname yeah. after that. At some point, we got to post some of those clips of how bad it was. I have no problem, like, making an ass of myself. No problem They're with it at there. all. They're oh, posted. Great, great. So, uh, yeah, but then when we got on the course, how'd that look? No, you can you can hit a golf ball quite a far and quite I hit a it far straight. Away, that I hit it straight too. Uh, the, it's no secret that on the range sometimes I'm absolutely awful. Well, I was working on our our Chicago rounds because you put I'm working on. I'm talking to a couple of buddies. I'm like, uh, and my buddy who runs this huge golf company that's based in Chicago, right away was like, you know, I've heard great things about Jake's game. I was like, fuck, Has don't he? say that. I don't want to hear that. Tell me you've heard. Tell me you've heard bad things. Yeah, and he wouldn't lie about shit well, like this. Well, who, uh, who, who, who is lie. he? Is he a black it's Sammy? It's Sammy Bettinardi from the Bettinardi. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, he's probably he's, he's probably heard Butler. He's probably heard things about my game from Hap. And it's all it's all over the map. I mean, I could shoot a 78 or a 92. I mean, it's, there's no secret. It's just straight amateur. Straight speaking amateur. Of, speaking of yeah. Hap. He's on the he's on the docket because this is our guy. He's a he's a, a close friend of the program, and uh, I mean, bro, real quietly putting together an unbelievable. Yeah, he is season. very happy for him. Um, and how pretty is his left-handed swing? I mean, he he obviously he can do damage right-handed, but I don't know if there's a prettier swing out there. Just the finish. He's got such a nice ass too. Uh, great lower half guy. He's got a pretty face, so just, the whole the whole setup looks good. Very happy for him. He's like a little brother to me. But he did. He has violated our trust significantly when he got the hair plugs. Well, you know how that is. You, people are people are very self conscious about their hair, and I know I, I was early on when it started to go, and it took me a while to get to the point where I'm like, you know what, fuck it. Like it is what it is. There's nothing I can do about it. Uh, I'm just gonna wear it proudly, or or not wear it proudly. You got to come to terms with it, and you know it's at some point. And I think you're 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 getting there. Are you saying Hap did it? No. I, well, I'm saying that people want to 
restore their hair or <laughs> hold on to what they have. I mean, I played in college with a guy, a good friend of mine who started taking, uh, was it Propecia at the time? And it was just kind of like something that would help maintain what you have. I don't think it was going to help regrow hair, but it, uh, it had side effects. So for me, unless there's something out there with no side effects, that's not surgical, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing it, but I understand why people do. Cause not having your hair is, is a, it's a tough thing, tough pill to swallow. You know what I mean? It's a tough one. Yeah. No, I, I, abs yeah. I absolutely know what you mean. And I am, co I'm comfortable. Listen, I'm, I'm super comfortable with my own skin. I think, I think people wake up wanting to be, I may be too comfortable in my skin. We'll say that, but, uh, Ian had to the all-star game. What about that? Uh, yeah. Well deserved. Absolutely. Would it, I mean, I'm saying it would it be, would be of course. right. Of course. I mean, I think it's probably, probably goes, uh, under the radar overlooked, what he's doing just because of um you know the the way the cubs have performed overall as a team you know not not very sexy uh season for the cubs but but yeah he's uh he's probably the best player in the field outside of uh wilson Contreras. so this is around the time of the year everybody's getting into the voting the ballots are saying could you hear this and that and so what was your experience the first time? Is it like who? Is it like a special phone call? Is it the manager who's like, "Hey, just so you know, you're going to the All Star game"? Or like, when do you find out relative to the game and who's? Well, typically the manager would have a meeting, uh, you know, in the clubhouse with with the entire team and uh, and let everybody know who made the All Star team, and it's very special. You know, I I only made one All Star team, but you know, talking to guys that have been a part of the All Star game one one time or multiple times like you just you're like damn man like I, I i want to experience that and to be able to go to that is just you're uh obviously recognized for the season you've had uh thus far you get to be around you know the best players in the game uh you know be teammates for for a day with with guys you look up to or respect and just all the festivities everything that goes into it the parade is cool your family's there i, I had my you know had Cooper on the field with me for the Homer Derby and, you know, uh, David Ortiz is, is carrying Cooper around the field, getting to watch, uh, Stanton, uh, hit in the cage before the Homer run Derby. Uh, just a lot of cool memories. So I was fortunate to be, be there once. It would have been great to be there more than, than one time, but, um, yeah, really, really cool. So, and hopefully Hab gets that for the first time. We're cheering for Ian Happ. You're out there. Come yeah, on the we'll, show, get, we'll, get him on. Golf. we'll get him on. We'll get him on. I was on his podcast, yeah. so it's the least he could do for us. Yeah. Right? Hey, speaking of golf, you're you're wearing a collared shirt any special occasion. Yeah. I, we don't do no. free ads here, but I'm just saying, like, you go and somebody dies. No, every, everything everything's okay. fine. No no one's dead that I that I know of. But it's just uh, I, I threw it. I actually wore this yesterday on the lake. Uh, I slept at Lackey's last night, and uh, – this is what I'm in. You know, I'm, I'm going to head out to the lake after this and probably have a cocktail. I need to eat some food first. I, I've I've been a bad boy. I've been a bad boy these last three or four okay. days. Um, it, I but I, I feel say. like I've earned it. I've earned the right to uh, kind of let myself go for a few days. Or at least that, that's what I'm telling myself. Not eating great. Drinking a little bit too much. I told you, Ski Shores is back open. So I think we're going to go back down there today and uh, have an extra handful of chia seed or whatever it is. No. And yeah, I mean, no, I, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't <laughs> been taking any of my supplements. I haven't worked out for three or four days. I feel soft. I feel soft, but I'm going to roll with it. I'm going to roll with it. Is ski shore is a place you can pull the, the boat up to the dock or you got yeah. to drive there? You, you can drive there, but it's, you can access it via the lake. And I know a couple guys, that are it's kind of like the boat valet so i'll text them and say hey plan to come in in about an hour can you like hook me up with a spot because it gets packed it gets packed and there will be boats just kind of sitting there waiting for a slip to open up and you know you grease the guys with a 100 bucks and they usually take care of you i'm not we don't have to do this i'm just saying if you're feeling soft i'll always pop the top that that generally will make you feel instantly instantly better pal so don't be too hard on yourself man that's a problem with you fitness guys is like you know, like the second it starts to fall apart, you guys, no one, the only person thinking that's you. It's a fact. It's a personal pro. It's a personal thing. It's, it's something internal. Uh, and yeah, 
I just I have to I have to deal with that. I have to process that in my own head. Um, but I, I I think it's a good thing. I kind of keep myself in check for the most part. But yeah, I, I have this I have this tendency to <clears throat> feel like I'm not doing enough. But I do think that that's why uh, I've had su- success in the past with uh, with sports or you know things that I've gotten into because I, I expect a lot from myself. But there's times where I beat myself up too much. <clears throat> you know, it's like we're having a therapy session right now. But uh, but it's good. Okay. Hey, we don't have to. No, I like we it. Let's let's keep let's keep going. It's good. It's good. I, I was gonna say then who come to, will Brittany come to you and be like, hey, you got to calm no, down? Or no, no, do you, no. Because I'm hard up, dude. I'm I'm the king yeah. of like, dude, take it easy. I regulate that. I beat myself up. So I self regulate it. So, and I I I, t- I was talking to to Lackey and and Brittany before I left uh, Lackey's house. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna just I'm gonna let myself enjoy this. And it's summer for the first time here with the kids, and we're having a good time. I mean, I will mix in workouts. I, I'm definitely gonna do that. <clears throat> Uh, and I've got a buddy in town, sold his house, is basically moving here. He's trying to, we talked a little bit about it, Dylan Cousins. He's, he's trying to, uh, trying to sign with an NFL team. So there's a, <clears throat> there's a gym in town called the collective, um, that a, uh, a couple guys opened. One is a former running back at the university of Texas and he, I'm getting him set up with, with Jeremy Hills. Uh, and we're going to try and get him all the football knowledge and football skills that he needs. I mean, he doesn't need anybody to help him train or, or stuff like that. He needs the football IQ. So that's, that's what, uh, that's what we're working on with him right now. Uh, you know, the footwork, the, the hand battles, that, that kind of stuff, learning, um, you know, pass rush and, and thing, things of that nature. Cause he wants to play defensive end or tight end. I mean, he's six, seven, two sixty. He's, he's a monster. Will you hold the bag, or are you standing there with like a clipboard? Uh, well, he wants me to be his agent. He wants me to be his agent, um, and I told him I'd do it for free. But he's like, "No, everything you've done for me, I want. I want to do this to repay you." I'm like, "Man, like you don't have to. You have to repay me. You have to give me anything. I just want to do what's best for you. Anything that I can provide for you, um, that's that's more than enough." But I mean, he's he's a, he's a great dude. Uh, he's been through a lot, so I'm I'm really really happy for him. I hope that this works out, um, but we'll find out. It's like I just need to get him around the right people to decide. Like, hey, does this guy have what it takes or not? You know. So we're that's what we're trying to figure out. It's a nice project to work it's fun. on. I mean, yeah. like your buddies. I'm, I'm I'm pulling up pictures of this guy. He he looks. He's a good looking athlete. He's got a good jaw, which is how I like to yeah. measure athletes. Yeah. He's got that nice and sharp. He, he's a good looking guy. He's. Uh, God, he's so athletic. He runs like a, and he bought all the laser stuff, the setup, so he can he can figure out like the stuff at the combine they use. So I think his forty is a four six, at that at that weight, at that size, and he ran like a three nine three three cone drill, which was I think two tenths of a second better than like T J Watt and J J Watt. So like his athleticism and his speed, that all that's there. I mean, just what he needs is is the the football, the football IQ, because uh, he hasn't played in a while. I mean, I don't think he played since his senior year of high school. But I, there's, I wouldn't p- put it past this guy to be able to uh, jump into the mix and figure some things out. So we'll we'll see where it goes. Do you ever do any type of combine thing in the MLB? Do they ever have anything set up like that? I did a couple. Uh, like camps that like the Cincinnati Reds had one, the Pirates had one where it was just kind of, it was, I believe it was like open invitation. I got called by, by the Reds and the Pirates, like, Hey, we're putting this thing on. One was at D-Bat in Dallas. Like when I was a junior or senior in high school. And the other one was at, uh, was like in Fort Worth. And there were like hundreds of people at the, the Cincinnati Reds one. There was, um, you, uh, you know, you, uh, Giovanni Gallardo, so he was he was at the Pirates one that I did, and he was just throwing gas. Like we're bullpens were indoors. He was like mid nineties, just throwing gas. I was like eighty nine, ninety two, uh, and I was just blown away with with Gallardo at the time. Um, and the the Reds one I went to, there was a guy that showed up in like Timberland work boots and jean shorts. Um, you know, he was there obviously like just to show Travis off, Wood show off his, show, <laughs> show off his speed. Um, but yeah, it, it's not as, it's not as structured as like the combine. It's not a, 
it's just trying to see if there's any talent in the area because you know scouts are always looking for for guys that no one knows about um but it's not i wouldn't say there's there's the same hype around it and it's not as big of a production but it's 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 similar in that regard now can we get these lasers I mean, I think they're like thirty five hundred bucks. He bought it because that's what they want to see. The scouts want to see, his, like, yeah, to see like what our numbers would be. Yeah. I think I I, I, I think lasered. we totally should. When I was in college, it, when we got uh, when we got needed discipline in any way, like Sloshnagel would make us do conditioning with the football team, which was. Uh, which was terrible, terrible. So having to do bear crawls and, and, and rolling and doing all their sprint sprint work and watching like the D backs, like do the cone drills. It's just amazing that like, we are, uh, we are the same, like we're, we're human, like we're the same as them, but they're so, they're so freaky athletically that it doesn't even seem like we're the same species. So I would like to see how, how much slower we are, uh, in those drills. I mean, and, and Dylan, as fast as he is, like those guys are just, the, the, you know, the D-backs and the receivers just blow them out of the water. It's wild. Training with the football team reminds me, I'll, I'll get yours, the worst punishment we had on the baseball team. I mean, there were a lot of different things you think about, like when they make, the coach makes you run, you get up early or whatever. But So we're traveling and we're playing this tournament in Texas. Uh, it's like the Texas Pan American tournament or whatever. And right before we're flying home, someone gives us this, these oranges. They're like, dude, that we got great oranges in the, the neighborhood. You got to have these oranges or something. It was like, thanks for coming to the tournament. Here's this box really? of oranges. It was so weird. We get, on a t we get on this team bus. They're handing out oranges. Everybody's getting these fresh oranges. We get to the airport, and unbeknownst to every guy on the team, everybody left orange peel shit all over yeah, the Yeah, on the bus. And so, like – the. The pitching coach was like picking up orange peels on the bus and the airport and everywhere. So he was pissed. We got back to oh bro, we get back to the we get back to the clubhouse that night, you know. And this is this isn't TCU or some of these big programs. Like we're flying to Louisville, we're connecting in Indianapolis, we're taking a bus over to Central Illinois. I mean, it's an all day travel thing. We get back to the clubhouse, it's like two o'clock in the morning. The coach is like, Everybody back here at six AM. We're like, What? Oops. He's like, Everybody back here at six AM tells us about the orange peels. So what he makes us do is we go to the football field. And we run the fucking width of the field. We run the 50 yards down. You shuffle five yards over, and you backpedal the 50 yards back. You shuffle, and you just snake your way up and out yeah, of the football yeah. field. All, all while holding two baseballs over your head with your elbows at 90 degree the angles. The shoulder burn. We did, we did eight of these snakes, and it takes like – takes minutes takes seven minutes to do one of these snakes to sprint down shuffle over all this stuff and that was one of the weirdest most creative running baseball punishments because baseball coaches that's like a specialty is yeah we're gonna punish we did you snake we, like, yeah we're snake, not gonna get snakes. mad at you when you lose but we'll get mm -hmm. mad yeah and so would he just say would he just tell you like i'm gonna tell you when to stop you just run until i i say so yeah, like guys would drop the ball, you know, like somebody would drop a ball and he'd be like, you get another snake on top of that. Yeah. Like, God damn it, Schlichter. Yeah. Hold on to the Schlichter. fucking ball. Dude, we, uh, <laughs> that's a good It's bad. We would always run stadiums in the morning and it wasn't punishment. It was just our conditioning, but it felt like punishment. So we would do, we would run up and you know how college <laughs> football stadiums, um, they have those ramps that go back. They go back and forth like this, like uh, you know, kind of at a forty-five degree angle, so people can walk all the way up to the top of the uh, the stadium. So it does that. That you've got those ramps on one side, and then we would run across the stadium, run down that ramp, and then run to the other side around the end zone and do the same thing on the other side. And we would just run. We usually do five or six of those, and then occasionally our strength coach would say, "Okay." You run to the top of the ramp, and then you go into the stadium and run stair, run stadium stairs, and just you know six six thirty in the morning. You know, usually after several beers, um, some guys would stay out and like literally sleep in their car at the football stadium for a couple hours, and then run the stadiums. I mean, in college, like you can kind of handle that stuff. I couldn't imagine trying to do that right now. But there was there was some some difficult shit we had to do, yeah. And the we so at punishment running after, you know, doing the the sprints or the suicides on the field, you know, hundred yards and back and all, all sorts of random stuff. 
we would have to roll. So you get, you basically lay down on the goal line and you roll, just barrel roll to the other end zone and roll back. And there were times where some guys would just puke and they're like rolling in their own puke and it's, it's nasty shit. <laughs> the rolling is like a big punishment thing because you'd roll and what you'd have to use your core. You got to use your core like and roll. you get dizzy as shit. Like, and you're already exhausted and no, nah, it's, it's not good. It's not good. And you're just covered in, in grass and, or those little turf pellets, like the black rubber, uh, that cause cancer. So, um, yeah, not, not, not good, but I, it's all fun. Is there anything in the MLB in the terms of like Carl saying punishment wise, has anything ever happened like that? I heard a story where Cal told the young guys to never come to the back of the plane. And so one day they're on a flight and everyone's in the back of the plane eating like Baltimore, like blue crabs. And there's like old Bay, old Bay seasoning everywhere. And it's just, it's just a mess. So Cal and, and mind you, like everyone's in suits. They all, everyone traveled in suits back in the day. Tells Greg Zahn to come to the back of the back of the plane. And Zahn's like a little nervous. He's like, man, well, he, the guy told me never to come back here. So he ends up coming back there and he gets back there. And my, remember like everyone's just disgusting with old Bay and, and crabs. Cal grabs him by the back of the suit. And he's, he's, he goes, I thought I told you to never fucking come to the back of the plane. So they basically tear his suit off of him, like strip him down naked and just destroy his suit on the plane. Um, and Zahn was like, you know, kind of devastated. Just bought a brand new suit. He's in the big leagues like for the first time. And uh, he's kind of sitting there on the plane in his underwear and his suit in a million pieces. So that kind of stuff doesn't really happen. It's a good story for your yeah, kids. Yeah, but Caleb right? can Jr. Like, if somebody's going to do it to fine. you, it's going to be Caleb can Jr. ripping the suit off your fucking. And then Greg Zahn ended up playing in the league for, like, I mean, that guy. He might still he be playing for a long time. Sure. And Greg's he was on. doing oh, he was yeah. doing stuff. Great mullet. Oh, beautiful hair. Or, beautiful hair. He used to work out. It was an outdoor uh, gym. Like, the Fort Lauderdale facility was, was trash. We had, like, a circus tent outside the clubhouse with two big fans that would just swirl hundred degree heat in there. And like Zahn, he'd throw his headband on and it was like, nobody was allowed to work out while Greg Zahn was working out. So like, I would like kind of go outside and, you know, Zahn's still in there. Can't go in there. Uh, he'd throw, he'd throw his like, uh, you know, his music, his music was awesome. He would throw like, um, you know, like the sticks or Motley Crue or, or something, something heavy, uh, old classic rock so respect his music game but the guy wouldn't really let anybody in the weight room while he was in there and he, he he could he could be kind of a scary guy you know that's my first big league camp so i was like you know what i'll let him do his thing i'll come back later yeah i'm not fucking with i'm not like if a backup cut no offense to greg's on but like if a second string or back, traditional backup second catcher is like that much of a dude where you can't come in there when he's in there. You you just have to respect, you respect that it. Alpha yeah, like I'm not gonna say shit. Like do your thing, man. I'll be I'll be back in an hour whenever you're done. And it reminds me. Let's talk about our, our friends real quick from game time because it's that time of the year. A lot of people have time off work. You're traveling. You're putting time around going to the ballpark, seeing a game, or going to a concert or a show or really any opportunity to get out of the house. I want to talk about our good friends at Game Time. It's a ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last-minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. And they guarantee the lowest price because they crack the code on how to score last-minute tickets. Jake, I am curious from your perspective as a player, not as a team that you played for, so I get no Cubs, Orioles, yeah. or whatever. We're interested. What's the best MLB stadium as a player to play at? Well, you know I'm going to be biased to Wrigley. I mean, how how can I not? And even you if, can't. I'm saying no, 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 no locations you played for. Oh, oh, okay. Well, then Dodger Stadium. Dodger Stadium for sure, because I like the history. I like the old parks. I like watching clips of of guys playing in these stadiums. You know, eighty, ninety, a hundred years ago. I just think that, you know, as a baseball fan and just a fan of the history. It's hard to – and, yeah, there's some great modern parks in Collin. I mean, C City Field's a great place to play. Like, I love City Field. But, you know, I think a lot of people would agree with me. It's like Fenway, Wrigley, Dodger Stadium. 
they're just classic, man. You know, like the 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 players that 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 towed the rubber or stood in those batter's boxes. It just it means a little bit more, and that's one reason. Like I'm so I was devastated that they got rid of old Yankee Stadium. Like how can you how can you tear that place down? Did they do a good job with it's the terrible. new one? Yes. And is that land extremely valuable? Do they you know did they want to do other things with it? I get that, but uh, how do you get rid of it? Did you ever sign the wall at Fenway? I signed the I signed the wall a lot, but unfortunately they like paint over it like like once a year, or once every couple of years. So like the guys that signed it years ago, some of like the 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 greats in the in the game of baseball, those signatures are gone unfortunately. I I don't know if a lot of people know that. No, but I mean Honestly, though, if you're a Red Sox fan or you get a chance to get out there for some of those Fenway tours, you're a fan of Fenway, go check it out. Go see the signatures. Check out the game time app, too. I'll say as a fan, you know, my favorite stadiums to go to, I like going to PNC. I like going up to Milwaukee. Obviously, I'm biased with Wrigley. I used Game Time in Omaha. It's a great app. It's, it really is. Last, last minute price drops can be found on the seats you thought you could never buy. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, we all we all know my game my game time experience, and as good as it was, I'm, I'll continue to use it. A lot, all my friends use it. Um, my younger my younger brother actually used it not long ago. So it's uh, it's let's get it on day. Lackey's phone. Lack, I want it. I want it on Lackey's phone. Not until John Lackey's downloaded Game Time, use the twenty dollars off your first purchase. Tell John download the Game Time app. Go to the account tab. Create a login. Laggy just figured out how to use like uh, Postmates or or uh, one of those other ones, uh, DoorDash, for the first time like last week. Fox tried ATL. He doesn't. He yep. doesn't. You know, he he's not a big technology guy. He keeps it simple. He was the only guy I ever saw that I ever played with like come onto a big league flight with like just an envelope with like ten thousand dollars cash and a cell phone. Like that's he. There's no, there's no like Gucci duffel or like uh, R uh, Ramoa like rolling deal and like or a Merce like it was just he had ten grand cash at least maybe twenty and his cell phone. That's how that's how he rolls. So he's a, he's a simple guy, and uh, he, he's he's never gonna change. But I'll, I'll see if I can get him on the on the game time ticket app. Yeah, because it's that easy to use. Just download the app, go to the account tab to create a login, redeem code starting nine for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download game time. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Uh that's a game time app, guys. Check that out. They get their money's worth here. That's what you get from starting nine because we're committed not just brand ambassadors to the game of baseball, but really brand ambassadors to anybody who wants to partner with us because uh that's the type of guys we are. We are those guys. Yeah. Yeah. I had another question. I had another stuff. I got, I got a lot of stuff going on in my head. I think it's a good time, though, to remind our audience. Um, this is a special time for Barcelona Sports on the calendar. A lot of people like to bitch at us about our jobs. They're like, oh, you guys are off today. We are out next week. That's 4th of July week. We get two weeks off a year. One is around Christmas time and the new year. The other is around the 4th of July. So starting nine will be off 4th of July. Jake, you're moving into a new house. So this yeah. is important programming. No, this is not because, you know, we're, we don't care about you guys. We know we're coming up to the all-star game. We have the dog days. We're going to be with you guys through the end of the season and then beyond. But the next week is off. And I would like to draw attention to this, Jake. You should be into the big house by then. This is a huge thing for the show. Yeah, we should be. Yeah, we should be. It, it's, it's an exciting time. I think the house is furnished about 50 or 60 percent and there's stuff coming every day. We could probably be in the house right now, but I, Bernie and I were like, look, we, I don't want to be in there and have to like let people in at seven o'clock in the morning every day to like finish touch up paint and and all that, all that stuff. So I'm like, why don't we just wait? Why don't we wait like another week and then get in the house after the fourth? And as you know, like we'll be using we'll be using the boat and the kids will be at the pool. We just we just won't stay there for probably another seven or eight days, which is totally well, I mean, fine by me. The end is four, the end is four near. years, five the years. End's in sight. Four years, man. Four years. And look, building a house is uh, it's an it's an exciting thing to to go through. But I don't know if I would ever do it again. 
I really don't. It's just too much of a headache. And with the supply chain, I just hate hearing the supply chain issues. But it's, it's, it's a real thing. And it's a lot of people like don't want to don't want to work the same way they were before. And trying to get people to to fulfill their, um, you know, their commitment to to the job is, is way harder than it ever has been. So. So what specifically right now has you feel on that way? Uh, well, the, the way that ba- things are back ordered, like we can't get like certain certain things for the house for like 12 to 16 weeks, like little shit like wallpaper is is 12 weeks out to get like certain bar stools is is three months. It's just little shit like that. I mean, it's not in the grand scheme of things. It's not a huge deal. But when you're when you've waited this long to get in your fucking house, it, it kind of is. Yeah, I think anything like. Okay, so where I'm at, I live in, obviously, if you're around Chicago, I know you lived in Lakeview. I live in the Lakeview Roscoe Village neighborhood, and I love it. And, you know, it's like you stay there, you put your roots down. We're trying to figure out what the, what the right move is. I got family in West Suburb, family South Suburbs, family South Side, and what have you. And kind of like my, my point in going through, like, of the seven different places I've lived in Chicago and renting and popping around and then getting married and then, like, dude, there's literally no worse experience than when you have to move and you're unsettled and then there's no better feeling than like when you are walking around the place and you're like we're finally settled it is just that dichotomy is the worst man you've been doing this for again not to go back to it, it's like years of of the sense of like we're not right. where we want to be well and we throughout my career and Brittany and i uh, tell people this all the time and they don't like completely understand it or realize it and they're kind of shocked when we tell them like how our living experience was or ha- had been throughout my career. It's like we're in three different houses. We have, you know, obviously our our um, our main house, our home has always been uh, here in Austin. And then we usually rent a place in spring training. And then we rent a place during the season. And you're like renting furniture. And sometimes you, you're renting beds and, and basically everything. And then you just kind of never really feel settled. Um, and it's, 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 it's a hard lifestyle to live. If you're young, it's a little bit easier, but you know, you have, you have kids and you have pets and you have all that, you have all this shit to deal with. And, um, it's, it's kind of a tough deal. I, I tell people we're, we've been nomads. Like we haven't been settled since, I mean, we're not even settled yet. So it's been, 13, 14 years of just kind of being in and out of suitcases, having boxes packed and unpacked and uh, shipping furniture from Chicago to Austin or from Scottsdale to uh, or from Clearwater to Philly. Like, it's just it's a lot. And if you could see what's in front of me, like I got mattresses laying up against the wall because this is my temporary uh, little studio setup. So it's 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 a. It's not a bad problem to have, but it's just kind of logistically kind of a nightmare at times. Are the mattresses just up there or is that for soundproofing? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, I guess that does help. <laughs> that does help. But uh, no, you know, it does very much. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. I might have to do that in, in the new setup, but they're just here. No, but is there is there audio issues i feel like i'm i'm doing okay well no, no you're clean no, 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 no. you're okay. clean you got cl- the internet t- colin don't be doing this to jake jake you are good. you're solid we're not bringing up the infrastructure right now we are not talking infrastructure on this well i think we're pretty folks. stable now we've stabilized uh, the connectivity issues uh, let's just talk about them then if they're stabilized yeah. enough we need to talk we well need it's to like this is it's like, episode 16 mm-hmm. of starting nine reboot and and what people don't know is that episode 15, other the first episode we did, we did together. And then we did episode 13 together. Yeah. And those other than money. that, it's been remote. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Money. And, and we're getting there. We're getting there. I, it's not like jinx and a no hitter. We're going to talk about it because, well, I'm not going to say it won't happen again, but we're, it seems like we're in the clear. I, I'm a headache. I, I'm, I'm a problem. I'm a, I'm a real problem for, uh, for people at times. And I'm working on that. I'm working on that. I've got my issues, but you know, I'll be transparent about it. I think we've, I think we've definitely, we're kindred spirits on, on being problems, but 
but to be honest, the internet come through is clutch. You wiped your MacBook. I think it's time to start pointing some fingers. Do you download your porn or do you stream it? Who? Nobody downloads porn. I don't know. You for someone's MacBook to go out, you strike me as like a Napster guy. Who's no, there, like a I lime used wire. to be. Man, you remember like it? It would take you like three days to download like a like a two minute clip. You That's know, and I'm trying it. to like hide out in the parent. Like we had one family computer, and it was in like the dining room for a while. And I'd be out there at like two o'clock in the morning trying to like get a quick clip, and like hopefully no one sees that I'm downloading this shit illegally. Uh, man, it was it was tough times then. Now now that's kid, the wild kids, west. You of just have off. it. You just have it in the palm of your hand. Like kids are spoiled now, and it's scary. It's a scary thing to give your kids a, a cell phone for the first time, because it's like once you once you give them the internet, it's like it's like game over. You give them access to everything. You text with Coop, right? Oh yeah, yeah. And it was a a tough thing to decide. Okay, is it time to give Cooper a cell phone? And we decided to because, you know, he's he's at friends' houses a lot. And, you know, I like to know where he is. I want him to be able to call us if, if, if he needs anything. And he's he's a mature kid. I mean, he's almost 11, but, you know, he's he's, he's a very good kid. Uh, trust him. Uh, trust him, uh, you know, as much as I could trust anybody. Is he, is he going to make mistakes? Sure. Like he is. And I, I want him to do that. I, I don't want him to get in trouble. But, you know, in, in Sandlot, like when uh, when his mom tells him, like, you know, go outside, like, you know, get dirty, jump fences, get into trouble, like not too much, but, you know, a little bit of trouble. I think that's it's good for kids. So you bring up Sandlot. I really want to talk about Sandlot because with the 4th of July coming, Sandlot just gets me all worked up. It's so good. When you were a ki- when you were a kid, like rookie of the year, little big league angels in the outfield, the Sandlot, like was there – yeah, Dude, you're was there one like, that kind of ones. like? I think little. I think little big league is probably the most. I love you for saying that's, that. It doesn't get enough uh, props. It really doesn't. It kind of flies under the radar. And I don't. I don't know if you could say it's just as good as Sandlot or. I mean, it's like for me, it's rookie of the year, Sandlot and Little Big League, and Little Big League is. It's a really really good movie. They did a great job with that. There's you know some of the some of the biggest stars in the game at the time uh you know the big oh, unit Griffey. big unit was in it i mean kirby puckett was in it buner griffey like just a, and, and then the closer for the uh for the twins like I, f- I forget his name but he'd always have like the giant flowers yeah the giant wad of uh, uh of chew wrapping it in in gum so like they got a lot of the little things right in that game that you see a lot of sports movies don't get right you know like the 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 small details and it always bothers me like why don't they just consult some actual players like hey does this look good does this look does this look like shit like you know and with any movie like with top gun too like they I feel like they nailed that. And I have a buddy who's, uh, whose brother-in-law was a Top Gun pilot. And he's like, man, they, they got about as close as you could get to like all the little details right. So that's the one thing that bothers me. Little Big League did a pretty damn good job of that. Uh, and more, more movies need to do that. Because it just like if it doesn't look realistic, it just kind of screws the whole thing up. Yeah, I got a list of the MLB personalities here. Can't agree with you more on that. I, and I like the – that was the one where they showed, like, the they'd go on the road trips and, like, the guys hanging out and doing stupid stuff in the in the clubhouse. I also got the relief pitcher's name wrong. People are going to get me – that's John Blackout Gatling was his name. Uh, here's the MLB personalities. Ken Griffey Jr., Lou Pinella, Mickey Tettleton, Pudge, Sandy Alomar, Eric Anthony, Carlos Baerga, who I loved as a kid, Alex Fernandez, Randy Johnson, Wally Joyner, Dave Madigan, Lenny Webster, Paul O'Neill, Rafael Palmera, Dean Palmer, Tim Raines. Man, they had a bunch of them in there. And uh, Rookie of the Year, I mean, did they – who was Chet. in that one? Chet Steadman. Right, but they didn't have they didn't have any big leaguers, did they? None. So that's, I, I don't think so. That's kind of it's kind of crazy if you think about it, right? Like one of the one of the best baseball movies uh, that's ever been made. I don't know if that's even arguable. Uh, and no big leaguers. They had Hito though. How how sick was Hito? Just grinding the bat to dust. Unreal, unreal. 
they messed up a lot of like little things in that movie that they they could have gotten right by just picking up the phone and calling somebody. No, Barry Bonds is in it. Barry Bonds and Barry Bonds Bobby was Bonilla in, are in it. it. Okay. All right. See, Barry Bonds. I think Barry Bonds strikes out. Barry Bonds did strike out. He did strike out. Think about that. Well, and I guess man. if you're gonna have have anyone like Bonds is a good one to have in the movie. John Candy. John Candy was the announcer. It was great. Now the the opening scene of Rookie of the Year captures the magic of like the day game at Wrigley. Is that yeah? Does it feel like that the day game? Your first day game at Wrigley, or your first couple like where you're like, holy fuck, this is sweet, or was it just like, no, this is just regular day baseball? No, it's awesome. And I, I think my favorite thing about it is that people are like in the stands a couple hours before the game. You know, people plan like vacations and, and years in advance to come to Wrigley for day games and, and to experience that, you know, walking around, you know, going to bars before the games. Uh, it's a different experience. It's a much different experience there. And a lot of guys don't like day games, but when you get to play them on a consistent basis, like you start to like it, you really start to like it. And my favorite thing, one of my other favorite things is playing day games. You get to actually go experience the city. There's not... You know, most cities you play in, even like, you know, uh, guys that that's that's their team. Like when I was in Philly, you don't get to go out and experience the city very often because you're always playing night games. So you wake up, you sleep in until 9, 10, 11 o'clock, whatever it is. Maybe you go to lunch in the city or uh, you bounce around for a little bit, but then you got to go to the field at, you know, 1 30, 2 o'clock. You don't get to go out to like uh, all the restaurants and experience like the nightlife the same way you do in Chicago because of the day games. So obviously Chicago is an amazing city and you get to experience more of it because of how many day games you play and playing like a day game and then having an off day the next day, like was, was the absolute best. Cause you get, you know, all night to go to dinner, or hang out with your friends and family or your teammates. And then you get the off day. So it's like the best of both worlds. I like that. I like going to day games way more than night games, but that's because when you go to night games at Wrigley, it is such a it is such a mess when you get out of there that like when that that initial spill out on like oh. Clark and Addison and you're just in the middle and there's just people you got like yeah the lines with the bars but so that's kind of the cool thing is like if you want to go party from a party standpoint bro the one ten on a Thursday or Friday like you get in there you're coming out it's four you can you can go give yourself like three good hours and then call a pizza in and you could be back on your couch showered streaming 8 30 loaded having a blast yeah you know so it's, it's a day rough game too. i like the day games yeah. I, the day games are badass uh, the rough thing about big events like that and i understand why people will kind of try and slide out in like the eighth inning because it's just a it's a madhouse but it's it sucks that you might miss like the best part of the game if you, leave. I mean, if it's like ten nothing or whatever, I guess it kind of makes sense to leave an inning early to, to beat the like the the rush that you're talking about. But it was there was a playoff game. It was in Miami. You remember that when like everyone left, because it, it was like a blowout, and they ended up coming back and winning that game. And their fans like banging on the doors, like trying to get back in. So and then you have to like tell your friends and family forever that like you missed like maybe the best the best game of the year or whatever in the playoffs so what, what's your stance on that like are you staying or does it depend depend on the situation uh -uh. i mean it, it like obviously i'm not leaving a playoff game or a big big game or something but i'm i'm like johnny duck out i'm the one in like the sixth inning being like yo if we get out of here now we can get the sluggers i know the guys there we can get we can set up i'm all about getting yeah. set up i want to yeah. have a good setup and it depends if you're in the bleachers you got to be out because these bleachers, you got more ground to cover to get back to like, unless the, you're the walking area. or something. If you have to drive, it's just, it's a shit show oh. around Wrigley. It's a, it's a train wreck. If you're walking, it's a different story. And like, I, would you ride your bike or would you walk to like, what would you I do? would, I would, I, I rarely drove a car. Uh, you saw my little white scooter that I had, right? The little, uh, oh, that's the right. Cabo, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's called like a Cabo 1000 or something like that. And I could like weave in and out. So I would, I bought that. It was like twenty five hundred bucks. Is the best investment that I made while I was in Chicago. And I would. Uh, and Theo's not like, hey, don't be driving a scooter. No, no I mean, one said I, that to you. Uh, I think I think they might have just, 
messed around, like tell me to be careful, which I was. I mean, it wasn't something I was on for speed. It was just to kind of get, you know, where I was going and try and avoid some traffic. Um, and I would, I would ride that or my bike most days. And you got to have a bike in, in uh, Lakeview or around the Wrigley area because I would ride it to Lakeshore, shirt off, just cruising, uh, just enjoying it in the summer. And a lot of people there don't even have cars, as you know. And I saw this one lady. I bought this thing called an extra cycle. And I saw her like with one of her young kids on it. You got to check these things out. Um, What's it called again? Say it. Extra cycle. So it's like a it's a cruiser bike, but then it has this like cage built on the back. So one or multiple kids can sit in there. You can even put like a little baby seat if it's like a, a kid who can't like sit up on his own yet. Um, or they can just kind of sit in this little cage on this pad and they've got little, little uh, spots for them to put their feet. They've got these big bags that you can have put on there. People grocery shop and just ride them around the city. So I ended up getting one of those and used it during my whole career in Chicago and then just recently gave it to a buddy of mine who has two young kids. They're, I'm looking they're at pricey. Now. They're it's pricey, awesome. but I mean, I think it was like 30, 35, 3600 bucks. But I mean, all these electric bikes now, and as expensive as bikes are, it's really not that bad if you uh, if it's kind of your main mode of transportation in the city. I'll talk the price of crude oil right now. I absolutely will talk about why alternative transportation methods are hot. You know. We don't have no. We're not talking oil prices. We're not. We're not. But I if you are an extra lately. cycle proponent, I mean, it's I, gas it's is up. Gas is up. Six. What is it in Austin? It's six dollars here. Uh, it's not that high. I mean, it's it's five bucks or so. But I mean, I'm putting so many gallons of gas in my boat, like on a weekly basis, that you like really start to notice. I think it's sixty four gallon uh, tank, and I'm filling it up. Uh, I mean, once a week. So does it, that's sucking more than the G-Wagon, eh? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's guzzling some gas. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. But, I mean, it's just so much fun. I, I'm not going to not do it. <laughs> you know? But I, I need to find a method to get the gas cans down to the boat a, a little bit more if, efficiently. I like carrying them, but, man, it's, it's a pain in the ass because when the 7.5-gallon – is is full i mean it's like 100 pounds and then when the uh 15 gallon it's like 150 almost 200 pounds of gas to carry so that's uh, you got to earn it though right if you want to go out and enjoy the boat you gotta you gotta earn it you gotta carry the cans there isn't a like a place you just pull the boat up and drop it in <sighs> unfortunately the only spot that there is on the lake is like way way down uh the lake like near downtown so it's i mean to get there it's th you know half a tank of gas just to get the gas and so it doesn't make sense and that's why I've it tried. doesn't it sounds like organized crime stuff no listen to me for a second and this they, is uh, what organized crime families do they 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 get one spot in and nobody else puts gas in. i'm just thinking why don't you and your buddies just put a gas station right I've, in there? i'm glad you brought that up i guess we haven't talked about it but i tried i've tried to go through the city and, and try and acquire permits they used to have a place uh, a little bit closer to us on the lake. It shut down years ago. I think that it was because of, they said, issues with uh, or concerns about gas getting into the water, which, I mean, we can we can figure that out. It, it, marinas do it all over the world, and they don't really have issues. Uh, you might be right. Maybe they just want to control it. Um, I, I don't know, but I am still in the process of trying to figure out how to open, open a station. The, the hardest part for me right now, I mean, obviously the permits are tough, but tr trying to find the land, I have to buy the land and as expensive as land is right now, especially here on the water, it's just a, it's a huge price tag, but we've, we've, uh, we've tried to do our homework on that and I'm going to continue to do so, but I haven't had much success. I, I really haven't been able to get anywhere. So if anybody out, is, is out there listening, can help me, try and figure this thing out with with the city uh, i'd be very appreciative very close friends of the very close family members i should say have specialty in energy law and buying and selling gas stations so uh we'll talk dude i'm not joking i'm i'm i get i got entrepreneurial spirit you wouldn't believe yeah it. I'm, I'm sure you do like you're a grinder 
your feet hit the ground in the morning and you're just, you're off to the races getting shit done. And I respect that from you. I, I'm, I'm learning how to, how to be like you. I'm trying to take a page out of your book. It's just, you're an inspiration to the show, to Barstool. You know, I, I text you before the show. I said, blush, find it. Thank you, dude. What'd Jake? you say to me? What'd you say to me before the show? I was just trying to throw you some cover there. So it didn't sound like you were saying anything too nice to me, but, um, nothing. No, I, I let's do this. We have, uh, a little bit of time left. I'm interested. Um, we do have this break coming up, so like we'll just freestyle us. What's on your mind? Take us away, Jake. We got time. I got nothing but time for you, but I'm interested. Kind of what's on your mind as we come into Fourth of July? You got the, as we talked about. You know, obviously moving to the house. You know, as this is like a this is kind of a sentimental time for baseball, but it you know, is. I, I don't know. It, it's, I, just, it's a. It's pr it was probably my favorite part of the season. Um, you know, we're kind of getting, we're getting to the halfway point. Uh, the All-Star Game's right around the corner. I'm excited to kind of be there with you guys and experience that uh, as a non-player. And um, just ha have, having a blast here, having a blast w with the family and, and really enjoying it, uh, not taking it for granted. Uh, you know, I, I miss, uh, there's parts of the game that I miss, but being able to do what I'm doing now, uh, it's it's special uh, work, working with with young kids and and trying to develop these players and uh, a sore a sore subject. I mean we we lost so Will is no longer going to be on our team. He's no longer going to be on the Outlaws. Um, Wait, this is our this is our pitcher, right? This is like the big righty. Um, I mean he's 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 a good pitcher. Yeah, I mean he's he's probably our he was probably our best hitter. I mean it was like him and. And Cooper and Grayson and Daniel. I mean, we got some good players, but um, his dad's pulling him off the team. Uh, I mean, his dad likes to have have a lot of control, and he he likes to he likes to stir the pot. Um, so it's it's actually it's 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 good and bad. I mean, we don't have to deal with him. I mean, he's a huge headache. He's just always always causing trouble. Uh, Will's a good player, though. Will's a good player. He's going to be tough to replace, but uh, I mean. Unfortunately, his dad has pulled him off teams in the past, and um, that's just that's just kind of how he he operates. So uh, now he's somebody else. That sucks. Somebody, I always know yeah. his kids. Yeah. Well, now he's he's somebody else's problem. I, I'd rather I'd rather uh, have to find somebody else than than deal with his dad any longer. Yeah. So that's like a was you good advice for our guys listening here? Is you have like young kids coming up in like baseball and stuff. Um, my personal experience with my father as a player, he, ne he was just wanted to be there and make sure that I was not being, he never, ever, ever talked to a coach about like, you can't say this or say that, but he was there if he, if that ever arose or we never talked like you should have done this or that you should have thrown this pitch. It was just like, are you, do you like doing this? And I'd be like, yeah. And he's like, I like how much you like doing yeah, this. Yeah. You had the you support know, like from that your you father like that, right. that you, you should have had. And unfortunately a lot of parents aren't like that. Parents want to live through their kids. Um, you know, it's just you got to let them be themselves. And uh, like Cooper had, like he's playing on a rec basketball team, and it's not, I mean, it's competitive. It's definitely competitive, but it's not like AAU or like this, the, like the select ver version of, of like baseball. Um, he's playing on the team with a bunch of his friends, and they're, they're a pretty good team. And they had a game uh, last night, which was an absolute blast. I mean, we we're on the boat all day, and we like had to had to rush home. He he's like taking a nap on the boat as we're coming back to the house. I'm like, shit, like he's got a game in 40 minutes. He's gonna be cooked. But we get we get him changed. We get him to the game, and he has an absolute blast. And uh, I tell him like, uh, dude, just like start jacking up shots and and do behind the back, between the legs, work on the shit you want to work on. Just have fun with it. They ended up winning by like eight points, and. There's like 20 seconds left uh, until they sub out. So every five minutes, they sub in five new guys. I think they have 10 players on the team. And I'm like, hey, 20 seconds left. He got the rebound. I'm like, get down the court and jack up a shot. Like, just go for it. And he like he launched one from way behind three. And yeah, he missed. But I'm like, hey, at least he hit the glass. So uh, he has fun. He gets a shit ton of boards. We're working on a shot. But... You know, again, it's just he's going to be tall. Yeah, he's going to be tall. He's going to be, be tall. He eats good. I know I'm dad's to... only six, two, six, four, baby. 
I'm trying to I'm trying to put a little weight on him. I mean, he eats great. He eats a lot. He's just like he's growing so fast. Like it's tar- it's hard to it's hard to put like muscle on him right now. He just he keeps fucking growing. He's gonna be taller than Brittany next year. What do you what do you got? What's on your mind for for the weekend? Um. All right. So like I like these breaks a lot because then I just get to like decompress and go hang out with my family and do do shit, play golf with my dad a lot. And we can um, regroup. Yeah, we just like regroup and get stronger. But my uh my Mrs. Carl and I are gonna. We're doing like a staycation in Chicago, so we're gonna be like. St- I think we're gonna stay at a couple of the really nice hotels, like Peninsula, Langham, uh, London House. The Langham's so we're great. We're gonna do something Peninsula's like. Peninsula's great. Yeah, so that we're trying to figure out like what the good. You know, I mean, there's gonna be probably some zoo trips, probably a nice day on the river, probably a nice day taking. You know, like I'll take a couple edibles and go for a little walk, and um, I would like to not do anything like traditionally, you know, like Barstool Carroll related. Like I don't need to be going to White Sox games and Cubs games and I don't need to be walking around town in like the usual spots. I think we're going to hit up some atypical spots around town. And then honestly, I just want to like I've en- I've thoroughly enjoyed this show and I'm still learning. I'm getting better at getting it into like the Barstool Chicago universe and stuff. Like the guys were asking earlier, they're like, dude, it's like, we can't wait to have Jake on Redline, which is like our, our Chicago sports podcast. When you come in town, we'll do like a cool thing where you can sit down with the boys and chop it up. And like, it's just been cool, man. This will be a cool week for take some time, do some thinking. And like, we're going to come back super strong. I, I know like where this podcast is going throughout the course of the, it's going to be fucking awesome. I'm sorry for the language, Brittany. It's going to be awesome. It, it yeah. really is. It's coming together. <clears throat> no, that's okay. Well, we're, we, it, yes, uh, I need to be, I'm going to be better. We're all going to be better. And I'm learning, learning a lot, learning a lot. You know, it's first time doing something like this, working out the kinks, figuring out how to uh, operate at, uh, you know, at, at full RPMs, at full speed, Um yeah, I mean, I'm. I love it. I, w- I really want to know if you're gonna make a baby. Yeah, we're working. On, I mean, honestly, it's big baby week. This is big time for. Yeah, it, so. I, I know there's pressure there. There's pressure there to uh, to to make it happen. But yeah, now this is like the, this is we're there. We're like we're actually at the point where like I'm not ner- I'm not like at the point where we're like checking it, it we're like a couple weeks away until i'm like am i can i actually do this am i capable of doing this so um but mom has been away she's on vacation with the family you know i was in omaha with you and colin obviously and we can't make babies on the other side of the country so i'm not gonna i'll tell you when I, i'll tell you i'll tell you you'll be the first thought in my head when it happens i'll be like yo dude I think this was it. I think the it was a well. That'll road. if you're thinking about me, that'll keep you hard longer. So keep that in mind. <laughs> keep that in mind. I appreciate that. Brother. Or hey, uh, fa- Facetime me. Facetime me if you need help. <laughs> All right. If I, don't know I if Mama yeah. would like that, but I'll be there. For, just set, can, just set me on the nightstand. I'll, I'll walk you through it. I appreciate that. Um, all right. Keep your eyes peeled for that Facetime. Everybody have a really safe 4th of July. Thanks for tuning in. Jay, can you give your cue, tell people what to do? Well, guys, I, you know, appreciate everybody listening. We'd love you to like and subscribe, uh, you know, if you're not watching on YouTube. Uh, if you're just listening to our voices. I feel like the voice is getting way better. And I, I have had so many voice cracks over the past week. And I think it's been, it's been about 24 hours since my last one. So I don't know if I'm hitting the final stage uh, of puberty. But I'm, I'm getting locked in vocally. Um, don't, we don't have the prettiest faces, but we'd love you guys to watch us on YouTube. And just remember, unsubscribe, resubscribe really helps us with the algorithm. And we, and we love you listening with us. And we're going to climb we're gonna climb those charts um, as fast as we possibly can. You're a natural. That's all I got to say about that. You I don't are, know about you are that. You're a true natural. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm getting better. You are. You're and hey, partner. I am. You know what's funny is uh, I got a text like from from Jock Peterson and a couple other guys. Like we've got this this poker game fired up, and uh, I've actually been playing during the podcast. 
we we got a night we got a nice show game man we got a, a bunch of dudes in this game and jock has been recruiting uh even more i think we got about 20 20 guys in it now all right get some of these motherfuckers on the show let's let's do that we got to get jock it's hard i mean you know i and i understand it's hard with guys schedule and during the season it's it, you don't want to do a ton of interviews but fuck these guys need to need to start uh being a little easier to to deal with you know it's all right i mean i, I was a hard i was a, a hard interview when i was playing at times so i get it you do get it yeah now you're on our side doesn't mean it's i fine, like dude. it this but is a i get good it side. no it's a good side it's a good side uh thank you for that was a great cue that was sentimental if you guys have it again the youtube page is popping Colin's doing a good job with that we'll have more stuff we'll be back in in uh we'll be back in like 10 days we appreciate the patience go subscribe to all our shit i'll be on the blog obviously over the 10 days we don't put the blog down ever but we'll be around we love yes, you guys sir. take it easy love you so much great show buddy. Yeah.